Hi, I'm Lise Colucci, and I'm here to help you with all things related to healing from toxic relationships. So let's talk today. Somebody asked the question in one of the comments, what can you do? How can you help help yourself feel okay if you can't leave the relationship? What do you do if you can't go? And how do you maintain sanity is how they worded it when you have to stay in. So a number one thing here is having some space from the relationship itself, having something for yourself outside in your life, having things you do, people you see, people you talk to that the narcissist isn't involved with, the toxic person can't touch, so to speak, if you can possibly do that. If you can't do that, then there's other things you can try. Okay, but a lot of people have are in situations where they can't leave for whatever reason, can't get out or can't go completely no contact and they still have that thread back to the toxic person who will not leave them alone and will not like let them have peace. So it's not involving like say it's a narcissistic parent and you do not wish to go no contact. Stop telling them things about your life. Do have your life separate from them and then have that part have nothing to do with them. Don't share it with them. Don't have those kind of interactions with them. And yes, you're losing someone, you're losing having a parent to talk to about this stuff, but you don't really have one anyway if you have a toxic parent, right? So, and if you're in the relationship with someone and you can't get out and they're in the home with you, if you're able to have space, have your own things you do, your own friends you see, your own your own life as much as you possibly can, whatever's safe and sane within that situation for you. Another thing is remember, it is really important to break the enmeshment with them, to break the codependency to them. Stop having interactions with the narcissistic person that are you trying to get them to like you? Are you trying to get them to do anything, to try and control anything about their behavior other than trying to diffuse things so that you can have some sanity? So it's about not having the need for them emotionally to be there for you, which is sad, but it's the truth of what the situation is. Anyway, it's in seeing the toxic person for who and how they are and having the self-care going on and having the self focus for yourself in your life so that you're not looking to them to be your friend, companion, confidant, and all of that. Otherwise, that enmeshment with them emotionally, it means you're invested in it and you're going to lose yourself to it. We lose ourselves to these relationships. If you can't get out, ask yourself why you can't get out. Is it truly that you can't get out or you're not ready to get out or you're not willing to get out? Start being honest with yourself so that you can see the truth of it. If it's I'm not willing to, that's okay too. Just keep moving forward. Keep finding other things for your life. Self-care is super, super important here. You've got to do things for you. That can mean everything from going out in life and doing things for yourself to people who have no time for that or no, no funds or income or, or, or anything like that. Change the way you operate in your day. You take a shower, you brush your teeth, you eat a meal. These are all things you do, hopefully, uh, privately and for yourself, right? do them without including thoughts about the narcissist thoughts about your pain thoughts about how it hurts use those spaces and time to take care of you so for instance my may always give this simple example of like okay so you get up in the morning you take a shower put the water the way you like it get the soap that you like take your time when you enter the shower tell yourself this is a peaceful place right now. I am washing away everything I need to wash away. I am letting go of whatever it is you need to let go of. And I'm just going to stand here, take my shower in peace. When the thoughts creep up, tell yourself, no, not right now. That can happen later when I get out of here. <laughs> That'll be the rest of the day. For now, I'm having peace. If you don't take the breaks, you are literally marathon running your way through life without even a sip of water. You are just going full steam ahead and of course it's going to affect you either mentally physically or emotionally and most likely all three so those are a couple of tips um have someone to talk to sometimes when you can't leave it's vital to stay in therapy or coaching it really is if you have a therapist or a coach who understands and is not critical and judgmental of you and your own decisions for your life or your inability to leave for whatever reason 
then you are in a safe enough place to talk about it without judgment and be able to vent and process the things that go on so that you have a place to get it out, be heard and be validated. All right. And if that isn't happening, find someone that will do that. Now, I'm not saying validate your reasons for staying. Sometimes as a coach, we need to ask the questions and the hard questions of people that get them to look at their life because what they want is freedom. All right. But if you're in a position where you there, I, I know of people who legitimately cannot get out of these relationships. They cannot. There is no way they can. Without the relationship, they'd be either completely destitute, disabled, and alone, right? Or they um, are in a position where it is, um, I don't know, there's all kinds of positions, business partnerships that they cannot get out of right now, things like that. So whatever it is, have someone to talk to and have someone that can help push you toward healing you and let you and allow you to make the decisions and choices you need to make for your life to get there at your own pace, you know, with the help of a little push and a little support or a lot of support. Okay, so that's, that's another thing. Um, those are a few quick tips for ways to cope, things to do when you are in these relationships and aren't ready, can't, or for whatever reason, still entangled with a narcissistic person in your life. Um, if there'll be plenty more tips we could come up with here and let me know in the comments what you think or if you're struggling with this, if you have any further questions so that we can keep talking because this is a good topic to bring up at least every other week on here, I think. All right, you guys, I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to hit subscribe and the thumbs up. If you need coaching, group coaching or peer support, check out the information in the description of every video and let me know how you guys are doing and what you think in the main comments. As always, I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.